Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. If you're new, please subscribe and like. In this video, I'm gonna tell you a true story about how I got hired as a senior software engineer when I was only 17 years old. So this is really crazy and I feel like this could inspire a lot of people. So that's why I'm telling it. I haven't made a video like this before. I haven't told the story. So I'm really excited and I hope you guys are too. So it all started back in 2020, right when the pandemic first started. That's when I decided I wanted to start learning coding and I had a lot more time because we're all stuck inside. So I started watching uh, the Ruby tutorial because that was a language that I already was interested in. And if you don't know what Ruby is, it's a really cool language that takes a lot of the complexity out of programming and gives more creativity to the programmer. And I'll talk about this more in more videos. It also has a really strong community that's friendly to beginners. And there's a lot of content out there on YouTube and documentation. And there's tons of people now that will answer your question on different forums, including me. Flash forward a few months, I actually decided that I wanted to learn how to build a website. And I just figured since I already had seen that Ruby video, I knew that there was a framework called Ruby on Rails and I really wanted to learn that. So I started learning that probably in April, May, 2020. And I just taught myself and then watched a lot of YouTube videos where they would People would explain there's a lot of cool YouTube videos about using Ruby on Rails and building apps with it. And I just kept on building this website because for me, I was doing a lot of music producing for a few years before this. And I was taking it pretty seriously, posting to my YouTube consistently. And I just, at that point, I wanted a place where I could sell my music and you know, keep all the percentages because there was some other platforms out there but I just didn't want to have to go through them. That's why I decided I, I'm pretty sure I can build my own website, although I'd never done it before. The only time I'd ever built a website was using like a Wix editor. And that was just way back in the day, just building random websites. And I never really took them that serious. But to learn something like Ruby on Rails, it was a whole programming language and framework. And I didn't even really know the difference between Rails and Ruby. And you don't really know that for a while when you're first beginning, especially if that's your first language. But I just kept learning, pushing myself. And then after a few months, I felt pretty happy with my website. And then I'd start, I started to work on other projects, building apps for people that I knew, reaching out to them, seeing if I could do work for them. And I ended up building a few different websites that I was happy with and were just as like big and had features just like my own personal site. And I felt like at that point I was ready. I had a few projects I could put on my resume and I was ready to go start looking for jobs. So at that point it was probably like late summer or fall in 2020. I started applying for tons of jobs and I started getting on the interviews. Uh, I set up a LinkedIn profile where I started talking and there, uh, there was tons of recruiters. So when you create a LinkedIn, a lot of recruiters will reach out to you because of what you have in your profile. And I just talked about all my experience with the different languages and the places that I've worked at. So recruiters have started reaching out to do initial calls. So I did a lot of those. And then I did get pushed forward to a few interviews. So I had really had to keep doing interviews and just going to them. Cause I never even worked, uh, cause I was 17, I'd never worked a remote job. So it's just kind of all new to me. Even doing a video interview was hard at first. I had to gain the confidence and learn how to meet new people and keep the conversations consistent. Even now, it's still kind of hard to do interviews. You really have to get into a flow and do it. Even like making YouTube videos is kind of difficult. You just have to actually start talking and create a dialogue, have a discussion. But at that point, I had to go through a lot of interviews. So for the rest of the year, I was doing interviews all the way through 2020. Uh, I even moved forward in some stages where I the technical rounds where I'd be talking with the, the software developer. And I felt like it was going pretty good, but still I didn't have any offers after months of searching. And I had some take home challenges too, where I did coding challenges. I remember I built like a trivia game with JavaScript and it had all these features and I did everything for them. And then I didn't hear back them for them, from them for a few weeks. And then I did, I was just declined. They didn't want to go with me for whatever reason even though I felt the felt like the challenge that I did was great. And there is a lot of different situations like that. So that's one thing you gotta realize when you're 
breaking into a new career or even just trying to get that job, you have to deal with a lot of rejection and that's hard. But if you keep pushing, you eventually will get there. And that's what I'm getting to further on this video. So I just kept going. I kept doing more interviews, doing the challenges, submitting it, talking to recruiters, just back to back, week after week. I kept doing it. And then at the same time, I was trying to improve my own website. But at that point, I kind of stopped making beats and stopped focusing on that because I just was so interested and excited about the technology and coding. It was new. I had never done anything like that. So it's just at that time, I kind of gave it my all. And I remember like the, the big challenge for my personal website was I wanted to build a, a audio player, like a really cool audio player that would play my song. And then when you navigate to different pages, it would still persist in the bottom and just keep playing. And that was really difficult at first because whenever you go to a new page, everything would reset. So I had to do a lot of research and I finally found this framework because what I was using was Ruby on Rails. And then I realized with Turbo, you actually can add an attribute to the page that will persist your piece of code. So that fixed that problem. I had the audio player going between pages and that was awesome, but just had the logic of the audio player actually took me months because I didn't know uh, JavaScript very well. And building an audio player at that time was pretty complicated, especially because it was a fully featured audio player where it would have logic for like the different audios that would have to stop when you click on a new song. And then it just seemed kind of complicated at the time. So I remember I spent like, like a month or something just working on the JavaScript code and I rewrote the audio player. I would delete it and rewrite it over and over again. And I think that helped me to learn JavaScript a lot better. And I just felt like I was becoming a wizard with the technologies I was using, but I still hadn't got any offers but I was really going hard and I was learning the new frameworks. At that time, it was when the new frameworks for Rails were getting really popular. There was Stimulus Reflex, Hotwire, and those are taking over. People are really excited about that. And I remember I was at the front of that trying to learn them, but for me, that was Rails because that's when I was learning for the first time. But anyways, the time kept going. I kept doing more interviews and then eventually I got my first junior position. So that was a great experience. Cause what happened is I applied for this job and at that time I decided I was going to apply more for junior positions. Although that's what I was doing before, but there wasn't very many, but then a junior position popped up that I felt like I was perfect for. I applied and then we got on a call, we did an interview and it was really cool. The tech lead just, he shared a screen and he showed a code base, which was their app. And then he just asked me to walk them through and explain what was happening in code. So I just told him everything that I saw and what I thought it was doing. And that was it. Then the call ended and a few hours later, they called me and they gave me an offer. And what I wanted was $35 an hour. And they were kind of, they wanted to negotiate at first, but then they just decided like, you know what, since I wanted that 35, they thought it was perfect. Like I was really good at coding. So they gave me that 35 an hour and I was just very excited. I was very happy to get that first job and that was awesome. I had my first job as a junior dev and I started working there. Mind you, this was in March. So I was still 17. My birthday was in April. So I got my first job as a junior dev and then I was working there for a few months. Everything was going good. I was making good money for my checks. They were coming. They actually would send me checks uh, like in the mail at first. And then they started sending it uh, direct deposit later. Actually, I don't know. I think they might have, maybe they always sent checks in the mail. It was kind of interesting, but we just kept doing that. And then I worked there for a few months. Everything was going good. I was building what they wanted, but the technical, the tech lead definitely had some crazy ideas. Like he gave me a ticket where I had to get rid of the authentication gem we we're using. So user signed in and he wanted me to rewrite it from scratch. I don't know why he wanted it. It's, he said something about, you know, having more control over it, which might be true, but he was trusting me, which I'd never done anything like that. And I worked on that, you know, for probably like a week or so. And I won't really want to push it. And we pushed it up. And then <laughs> um, like a few days later, or maybe a few hours, we got the calls from the CEO 
and he couldn't sign in. He got really frustrated and I felt really bad, but then the pressure was on me to do the fakes because we didn't want to go back. We just needed to keep going. So I just worked really hard and I, would, I, I really didn't know what the issue was. So this was a, a lot of debugging that I had to do to figure out what that issue was, but I finally got it fixed. I pushed the code, everything was back to normal. And we thought that everything was good. But then I remember the a few weeks later, the they, they fired the front end developer who I was working with. I was doing full stack development and then that developer was doing mostly front ends. They fired them. And I don't know why, cause it seemed like the they were doing fine on the job. So it was just me left. And then really after that, things just got worse. Like uh, there was just one week where I didn't hear from anybody for a few days and I was really confused. And then finally I got a message and it was from tech lead who's just saying that things were kind of falling apart with the CEO and we didn't really know if we we're going to keep going. So I was like, okay, fine. I have to start looking for new jobs. So that's when I started looking for more on the market, started applying for a lot more jobs. And then uh, it was like a month later, I probably, I, I stumbled across this one position and it was for a senior software engineer job. And it looked perfect. All of the things that they wanted, I was an expert in all the frameworks, all the libraries. I felt like I've been using them for a while. And I just applied, I put my resume in. I put that last job that I worked as experience to with the rest of my project before. And I gave it my best shot. And I remember they were offering, I think it was like, like 60 to a hundred dollars was their 60 to hundred dollars an hour was their budget. I was like, okay, this is awesome. I, because before I was getting paid 35. So anyways, we got to the interview. I talked to the dude and he just asked me to tell him, him about myself. So I told him all the stuff I'm doing with rails and I'm really experienced with the frameworks that we're using. And that kind of just worked. And then he asked how much money I was, wanted to make. Or actually, he didn't ask in the call. That was pretty cool. He, we just did the interview. We met each other. Things went well. And then I think he messaged me maybe a few days later in the email. And then he just asked like how much I wanted to make and all that stuff. And then I, I told him 75 hour. And then he just had to go verify that with the CEO, the person who was you know, paying for the project. And then he reached back to me and I had the offer. And then he said, you know, start on Monday, you're getting paid. Uh, you have that, you're gonna get what you want, the $75 an hour and just, yeah, start immediately. And that was awesome. At that point, I had made it. I had got the junior position. I had upgraded to the senior position in a matter of months. Things felt so magical that year and it was awesome. And then I started making even greater checks. It felt great. I was making a lot of money as a senior developer and I was doing the work. Everything was happy. The clients were really happy with my work. And I actually worked that uh, project until the end of that year. That was 2021. So I started and I got the senior position when I was 17. After I had first got the junior position, I leveled up. I got paid more money and then I worked that and then with that client, actually, I was doing really good on the projects. I was building everything they needed, but I think just things in the the market, I remember like the, the owner of that business kind of got sick and then things just kind of went downhill from there and there wasn't really much going on in terms of development. So I left the project, but there really wasn't any, any harsh feelings. Like I could possibly get hired for them again if they needed more help. I just feel like in terms of development, they slowed down and didn't really need anything. But anyways, that was an awesome story. And then from there, I've gotten hired at many more senior software positions. I never went back to a junior position. And yeah, I just really want to share that story. I hope it inspires some of you guys. And you can see how much is possible, even just within one year. I flipped things around. I went from making zero dollars to making 75 an hour within one year when I was 17 years old. Yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. I'm gonna be making more cool content and talking about what it's like to be a senior software engineer, learning coding and all that. Well, peace.